Okay, um, this is episode 2, part 2. And uh, this part is directed to the students. Okay, kayo naman ang kakausapin ko. But before that, uh, shout out daw muna si Babe sa Team RK, Team Mateo Richie. Uh, rich kids, miss ko na kayo. Um, okay, so moving on to yung pinakalaman ng ating discussion. Um, let's level off. I know that most of you do not like learning online. Um, there's the common understanding na wala naman ako matututunan kung puro lang YouTube. Um, wala nang ibang ginawa ang teacher ko kundi magbigay ng magbigay ng PowerPoint tas diretso assessment. Um, I totally understand. And um, that's not my approach to teaching. I don't just give PowerPoint presentations and then diretso assessment. Um, on my end, I actually um, try to exert a valiant effort into uh, providing students with uh, a wide array of choices ng material sa pwede nilang gamitin. Baka gusto nila sa YouTube matuto or baka gusto nila marinig yung boses ko or baka gusto, okay na sa kanila yung PowerPoint. That's totally fine. I, I give them those options. But, um, I'll try to put myself in your shoes. I know how stressful it is na you're going to force yourself to learn in an environment that, that was not meant to be a learning space. For example, yung kwarto nyo. Ang laki ng temptation na i-off yung camera, i-off yung mic at matutulog. I totally understand. Office sa loob ng bahay. It was not meant to be a classroom. But you force yourself to engage in an online class using uh, that makeshift space. And it's true. Um, I find it quite difficult to work here at home, although I'm getting by, but um, it feels different when you work in the office and when you work at home. Dito sa bahay, uh, you get the temptation or you get tempted. You become tempted to turn on the TV, listen to music, and then um, aantokin, matutulog, pagising mo, wala kang natapos. So, um, as... I have mentioned in part 1, uh, teachers should exert more effort into diversifying their approach pagdating sa pagtuturo. And it's totally up to them whether they take that suggestion or not. But um, I, have, I have my suggestions for you as well. Uh, let's answer the, the question that I post dun sa part 1. What is your role in an online class? To my understanding, you are not just the receiving end of teaching. Hindi ganun. Um, students are not pails. You are not um, containers na pupunuin. That is, that is an old understanding of students. Um, that was when the teachers were the sources of primary knowledge inside the classroom. But this time around, you can learn stuff from the internet and probably you don't even need your teacher. I mean, for math, you have Khan Academy. Um, for, for other stuff, and daming available resources online. But to, to play a role in this online class and to determine that role is very, very crucial. So, your role in an online class, my dear students, mga anak, would be, you are the co-constructor of knowledge. Okay? Um, I will explain. In previous years, previous generations, including mine, um, we step inside the classroom and the teacher is going to pitch learning to us. Okay? The Socratic way. Uh, lecture, nakatayo. We listen, we take down notes. Sometimes the teachers would write something on the blackboard which were in fact taken from the book. Kokopyahin niya sa blackboard and then we'd copy it in our notebooks as well. Um, did it help? Probably. Muscle memory. But um, I don't think that approach uh, is effective in your generation right now. 
no, you guys would probably take out your phones and then snap photos. But um, over the years, and I have not been teaching that long, but over the years, I have realized that students actually act like uh, containers. They fill it up. And then, kapag tapos na ang SEM, mag unload nyo lahat yun. And then, maglalagay ng bagong content. Which, to me, is quite disturbing. Why? You learn for one semester, and then you unlearn everything. And when it comes, uh, when the time comes that you have to to remember those lessons, you are unable to. Kasi nga, nag-unload na kayo. Nag-unlearn kayo. So, um, why is being a co-constructor important? Learning is best retained or at least yung knowledge na nakukuha ninyo sa topic is best retained when you are able to practice the skill. Um, for example, if we are going to talk about Hekasi right now or in my generation, Sibika at Kultura, we probably don't remember all those names. Probably. Kasi nga itinuro lang siya. Nothing was practiced. Walang skill na 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 master, na na acquire. But um, say your parents taught you how to cook rice. Hindi yung rice cooker ha, yung traditional na pagsasaing. Tinuro sa inyo once, and then hinayaan kayo ng parents niyo na magsaing ng magsaing. Kayo na yung pinagsasaing nila. Probably until you get older, even when you have rice cookers at home, you will still know how to cook rice. And I know those are polar opposites. Parang, sir, napaka-farfetch naman ng example mo. But it's actually a good example. When you are able to um, to practice, to to put into to put into action or to apply what you have learned then that is the kind of learning that sticks with you hanggang sa pagtanda mo. Um, that is why, being co-constructors of knowledge, hindi pwede na si teacher lang yung mag effort Okay? Um, your teachers can only do so much. Uh, most of you probably say, wala namang kwenta yung teacher namin kasi puro PowerPoint. But you have to remember, it. your teachers exerted effort in order to come up with those PowerPoint presentations. And um, all of us are walking on eggshells. Okay? Um, hin- walang makapagsasabi na, ah, ang galing na namin sa online class. Um, there are so many things that have yet to be discovered. And there are so many aspects to online classes na hindi pa natatap. And as such, it's a journey okay? from from a blank slate to being proficient in online classes. But for those of you who decided to enroll and who decided to engage themselves in online classes, you cannot take a passive approach to online classes. Hindi pwede na, okay, may PowerPoint naman, so okay lang. Hindi ganun. Um, we cannot continually complain about everything. PowerPoint lang, that's assessment. Um, you also have to do your part. Hindi pwedeng mag effort lang si teacher. Tapos, on your end, wala na. Again, the term is co-constructor. Kasali kayo sa proseso ng paglikha ng knowledge. Or, you are there to create knowledge as well. How do you do that? Of course, that is a, a gargantuan feat if gagawin nyo yan mag-isa. So, my suggestion would be, do it as a class. Um, you and your classmates must exert enough effort to collaborate. Mag-usap-usap kayo na um, naintindihan ba ng isa. Kasi kung naintindihan niya, then maybe he can explain it to you using a language that you guys can understand. Kasi baka masyadong mataas ang language ni teacher. E nung isang kaklase nyo naintindihan niya, baka siya ang pwedeng magturo sa inyo. And 
if that person is you, if ikaw na nanonood nito, you are able to comprehend the lesson um, even from an online or a virtual na, na approach, then do your best to help your classmates. Kapit bisig kayo. Kasi hindi pwedeng magiging makasarili tayo na, ah, okay, ako lang nakaintindi. Good for me. Um, I don't think that's a I don't think it's it's a good practice na na dahil asynchronous ang delivery eh hahayaan na lang natin yung mga kaklase natin. No. Um kumbaga you were blessed with with the smarts, you were blessed with the intellect to comprehend difficult lessons and that blessing comes with a responsibility and that responsibility is to spread that knowledge to others. Hindi ko sinasabing spoon feed mo. Hindi ko sinasabing magpakopya ka or mag-cheat. No. What I'm saying is explain it to them as well. Okay? Um, magtulungan kayo. Kasi kahit na gano'n kabigat yung task, as long as you guys are helping each other cope with the challenges that you encounter from your subjects, from your teachers, from your professors on a daily basis, um, no challenge is ever that big. So, um, yun. Communicate with your classmates. And, ang isang suggestion ko, gumawa kayo ng class calendar. Mas maganda yun. At least sa class calendar, informed kayo lahat. May deadline tayo ng ganitong araw. Itong araw yung simula ng activity. Ganitong araw siya matatapos. Uy, may exam tayo dito. Um, I think that helps you guys organize your your activities, and you will be able to arrange them according to order of difficulty and immediacy. For example, lima ang project ninyo. You are not going to select a project at random, kung alin yung uunahin nyo dyan. No, 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 no. Dapat may system kayo. Arrange those uh, tasks by order of immediacy and difficulty. Ano ibig sabihin yan? Alin dyan ang pinakamahirap at alin dyan ang pinakaunang magde-deadline. Yun yung uunahin ninyo na gagawin before the tasks na madali at malayo pa naman. So, um, that way, hindi mauubos yung effort ninyo sa madadali. Tapos pagdating dito, pagod na kayo. No. Dito na lang, unahin nyo na yung mahirap at um, soon, or coming soon na yung deadline. Para, kahit pagod kayo, may time kayo magpahinga kasi malayo pa naman yung deadline nung isa. Okay? So, yun, your role as students is not a sponge. Okay? Hindi kayo sponge na mag absorb lang na mag absorb Tapos pag piniga kayo, dapat may lalabas. Hindi ganun. You are co-constructors of knowledge. And as such, you have to take an active part in the learning process. Ask other teachers Ask your classmates, go to the internet, research, maghanap kayo ng tutorial videos, and um, other other materials na pwede ninyong gamitin para mas maintindihan ninyo ang topics. That being said, I hope nakatulong ako, my dear students, my children, and um, I know na marami pang baka hindi kayo agree sa mga nasabi ko, but um, yun ang proposal ko. That, that's my suggestion okay i'm not saying that it will work for everybody but i will i hope that it can help many na mag-cope dito sa uh, new normal nga na sinasabi nila so i guess that would be all for this episode uh bye bye na si Bobby. bye 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 um until next time pugay kamay